what's going on everybody so today i'm gonna go over the top 10 best triple s's for the end game now the reason i decided to make this video now was because i just recently decided to push all of my comps to try to beat all of the katoshian triangle stages and with that i've been able to go ahead and do so actually pushing those stages and that means that I got, I got an idea on which ones I've most often used. Now, this also includes the stages between, you know, the bosses. So the kind of preemptive stages or the, the prerequisites to get reaching the boss. Oftentimes, you'll see many characters be used over and over again, as well as things like Twilight Lands Chapter 16, things like Endless Battle that keeps popping up, or whatever other piece of content you want to consider. These are the top 10 triple S's that I've used to kind of beat most of the stuff inside of Eternal Evolution. And let's get started here. This is in no particular order, I should say. These are just because I use them all the time, and most frequently oftentimes in the same team these are the top 10 that i've used and we're gonna start off here with one that's just returning in purin now this one's actually a pretty recent one and she actually was uh conducive to sort of beating all of the stages in eternal evolution because of how prevalent her ability to ramp up your dps with this ultimate okay not only are you getting the energy regeneration from her you know just kind of passive abilities or her straight up passive this damage increase is really good okay this coupled with that energy buff just rapidly increases the dps dps of your squad while also providing support and this character honestly there's not a single katoshian triangle or basically any piece of content where this character is bad um the closest you could come to saying purin's like i guess mediocre or maybe not useful is like thundercliff boss stage but you could use her in the prerequisite stage leading up to the boss so she always has a place in basically every piece of content in the game and there's not a single area in the game where if i have multiple teams to use including pvp i'm not going to be using purin i always tend to use purin basically in every single scenario Next, what we got to talk about, got to hop over to the assassins. And I think these are the two obvious ones, but yeah, Dominic here, guys. Dominic is just so critical as a DPS unit. Now, again, when you're considering boss stages, there are some stages that assassins aren't going to be particularly great for the bosses, but they're always going to find a place similar to your Purim in the earlier stages. And Dominic in specific, because he gets those bonuses when paired with the vanguards, right not only just the assassins you can actually slot him into some of the vanguard comps so you can kind of sneak into thundercliff i've seen quite frequently or just be used as a massive dps and nuke down the earlier stages and then they're also just exceptionally critical for things like molten abyss or something like roulette of truth i've even seen this guy show up in the battlefield of azura part of the main squad very very solid character and someone who not only is important and used everywhere but also probably the most critical piece to pushing some of those comps to the next level so dominic definitely got to be on the list and next one we got to talk about is actually northeon right yeah um i'm gonna talk about two energy characters here very very much excited about these two energy characters whenever i get the chance to use them but northeon in particular has been more critical to my success across the game than even Jaina, who's the other energy character I'm going to talk about just after Northion. Jaina does massive DPS, right? But Northion offers something a little bit different, which is the ability to soak up a ton of damage while also dealing damage. And in some of the earlier stages, not really specified for energy characters, you'll see Northion actually pumps out more damage because AoE encompasses more characters. And especially if you're not fighting like a boss stage, you're fighting like maybe one of the prerequisite stages before the boss, you can actually really get a ton of value out of Northion because that AoE is so massive. It also CCs and it is able to soak up so much damage. It's actually really critical for some of those earlier comps. And then of course, outside of the dungeons is where he really starts to pop off storyline, Twilight Lands, things like that. But we also have to talk about Jaina here. 
and I did compare him directly to Janus since they're both energy characters and they're both really really critical for the success in a lot of the latter dungeons and Jaina has one advantage over Northion, and that is that she can deal some of the most absurd DPS in the entire game if we were comparing like Dominic to Jaina on a single target yeah Jaina wouldn't be able to come close to Dominic when you consider AoE and you're actually able to benefit from the triple hits on some of these AoE skills or you're just AoEing she does the most absurd numbers you'll see in this game and that means that she is also the most important character for energy specific stages Northion is able to branch out a lot easier and a lot more effectively than Jaina but Jaina is so critical more so than arguably any character besides maybe Dominic for pushing her specific stages because of how much damage she's able to offer for those energy teams right so just an absolutely absurd character and going to be number four on the list here that we're talking about today um next one here well we gotta hop over to the summons and it's gotta be daniel uh daniel is someone mainly from the awaken here that has been so critical to your success as a summon comp his damage is unrivaled at this point if you have him at awaken five and you're able to gear him up with the proper gear being able to benefit from your insane dire baron out just really ramps up the overall summon squad and especially with crimson abyss this guy got even more important because he's so critical to kind of boosting up your natural progression giving you additional you know up hero upgrading resources which is insane but his damage is just so powerful that you need it for progressing through some of the stages unless you just want to like max out all your other summoners but while we're in the summoner category honestly i want to talk about another one and that is Doralee. now you might say oh what about anpu or sif those characters are fantastic don't get me wrong but Doralee is someone who i find using her outside of the summon comp more than any of the other summoners right most of the other summoners kind of want to be used together oftentimes to benefit from each other right like Anpu benefits exceptionally a lot from all the other summoners here. Daniel buffs up the summoners, etc. Doralee's interesting because she's a tank that doesn't actually get threatened by damage because her tank is a summon unit which she can resummon. So I found you find using her in comps outside of the summon comp. Obviously, when the summon comp is available, she's a key piece. But honestly, I've used Doralee quite frequently outside of the summon comp, and she's been really exceptional there next one up that is number six here i gotta talk about another support and that has got to be fiona um it's it's one thing to talk about assassins and dominic and all this stuff and while i do think dominic's a more core piece in order for the assassins to truly be the assassins that we know and love it really came down to fiona and when fiona came to the game she upgraded the assassins to such a high degree because of the massive damage reduction and damage increasing she's providing for all of the assassins or at least the three highest attack assassins that are able to hop around she really took them to the next level and really really allowed them to outperform and actually be able to be used in several different comps so fiona has been a very critical element for the progression of my account here three left here and we have to go ahead and talk about a tank pandemonium is such a key part of any situation when you're leaning towards tanks she is the key member you could literally run a bunch of elite tanks you know you could run vagnus if you wanted you can run um queeds you can run these kind of mediocre tanks but if you don't have pandemonium you're not going to succeed right if you let's say ran in with wamagon teresh Corabine into some of the tank battles but you didn't have pandemonium that's worse than running pandemonium with a lot of the elite tanks in my opinion oftentimes or at least based on what i've seen the dps coming out because of her exclusive 30. this is one of those characters where yeah some characters really want an exclusive 30 but pandemonium becomes a different animal with an exclusive 30. arguably the biggest improvement an exclusive 30 can have on a character is with pandemonium offers so much dps and really allows the tank comp to succeed where otherwise would have failed yeah a lot of the other tanks really just don't come very close the next one i want to talk about is part of the hunters 
the hunters honestly i really don't use the hunters very often in fact out of any class in the game i think hunters are used the least for me with one exception and that is rebecca all the other hunters really aren't able to compete in terms of single target dps when you're comparing them to the assassins and the assassins oftentimes just replace them rebecca is the one exception and oftentimes she is able to really dish out some heavy damage now of course the one exception to using hunters is occasionally in twilight lands when you have a hunter bond but even then i oftentimes just use rebecca and then maybe another person to boost rebecca's dps to get that hunter bond and then just run a bunch of assassins so rebecca really important and definitely someone who's going to dish out a ton of damage for you but honestly this is one of those classes where the reason why the hunters are even considered oftentimes is because of rebecca oftentimes the other hunters are just not on par with some of the other power level that we have inside of the game the last one the last one here that i gotta talk about and this one you know might be a little bit surprising because uh i don't like the vanguards very much but it's actually been aries yeah we talk about claire and i do think claire in some situations is better than aries but aries in particular has been way more important for a lot of different stages i've actually started to use this guy occasionally uh in various different comps as a plug and play character so i actually end up using him more than i would have expected any other vanguard and the main reason for that is the ability to drag people around with that ultimate having like an enemy off on the side let's say you're running an energy comp or let's say i'm just running northion in the comp it's sort of my tank and i'm running a bunch of assassins or maybe other dps behind him Ares actually helps a lot of the aoe by dragging some of the enemy supports or enemy dps closer to northion to where northion's ultimate can bring them even closer together and this really stacks very nicely and so Ares ends up being a character that i actually use quite frequently maybe not on boss stages but oftentimes on multiple of the prerequisite stages across katoshian triangle and of course he's still an arena staple and just absolutely dominates there so those are the top 10 triple s's that i use of course if you're considering specific dungeons and which ones are the most important you could change your value system in terms of how you evaluate it i only talked about one assassin but arguably you could put rickert kusanagi um asuka on this list you can talk about so many different characters across the board that depending on how your team comps go you can really determine which one's more valuable for your account now there is one that uh, i still have yet to use on my main account and that is guan yu i will probably just never invest in that guy or maybe we'll do it for a fun little meme video there are definitely a bunch of triple s's that have dropped off the face of the earth for me characters like um zyda characters like annie skewer right if i go to the Wedfear characters characters like uh prigor luke i hardly use anymore bada sorvely these are some of the char strongest characters in the game in the past and now with a lot of the triple s's coming out as you might have seen from the video a lot of the more recently updated or newer characters are on the list uh, and i say newer lightly because i'm kind of including the past like five months rather than the beginning five months of the game so with that said that's going to be the list for today let me know what you think in the comment section down below and what your top 10 characters are in the triple s category for the end game and I'll see you all for the next one.